cope with the problem of greenhouse gas emissions, Singapore has started building floating solar farms. It is building them on water, being short of land. Thousands of panels glinting in the sun are indeed a welcome sight to behold, especially so when renewable energy is a challenge in a country with no rivers for hydroelectricity and where the wind is not strong enough to power turbines. In the interest of climate change uh, and you know improvement of the sustainability, Singapore has exhausted all means for solar installation. Um, we don't have enough wind here to do wind power, so to go sustainable, solar is one of the highest potential. So after exhausting the rooftops, the available land which is very scarce, the next uh, big potential is actually our water area and we have got many reservoirs in Singapore that we can do floating, um, dual use floating and reservoir at the same time. The city state is affected by rising sea levels because of climate change and is aware of the urgency of cutting emissions. I don't think Singapore has a choice. Singapore has to consider every possible option uh, for solar cell deployment so that uh, solar photoelectricity uh, or solar electricity can contribute anywhere between 10 to 20 percent of Singapore needs in a long-term basis. Using solar power, Singapore plans to have 2 percent of the nation's power needs fulfilled by 2025 and by 2030, 3 percent. This should be enough for 350,000 households per year. As well as in water, solar power plants have already been built on rooftops and on the ground. Under development at Tenga Reservoir is a 122,000 panel solar farm. Uh, yes, we are constantly looking at uh, more uh, available area in Singapore. Uh, unfortunately, the, the sea area uh, are mostly congested. So we are looking at all those dead sea spaces that is uh, not utilised or have no future uh, utilisation plan. Given the tropics, we really cannot uh, leverage a whole lot on tidal energy or on wind energy. Neither tidal nor wind is strong in this part of the world. It's stronger towards the northern pole or the southern pole. Uh, solar is also compromised because of uh, rain, because of clouds, uh, and, and really the land uh, scarcity is uh, also a challenge for Singapore. This will be one of the biggest solar farms in Southeast Asia, covering an area the size of 45 football pitches. It will reduce carbon emissions equivalent to removing 7,000 cars from the roads. Singapore has pledged to have its 2030 peak greenhouse gas emissions by 2050 and achieve net zero emissions, as soon as viable, in the second half of the century, but even so, this may not be enough. You're watching The Independent Singapore. Subscribe to this channel for more news and documentaries.